Hey guys, for today's video podcast, which by the way, I'm so excited I can post one again. It's been forever. I think August was the last one we posted. I'm going to invite my friend Katie today. So we're going to talk a lot about some really cool things. She is one of those people you would imagine meeting in Nashville. She's part of the music industry here. Um, she's trained a lot of singers that you've probably heard before. And it's just cool because she's a vocal coach and she tours and she also does vocal producing um, here in Nashville. So really cool. And it's interesting to hear her perspective when it comes to personal style because we talk a lot about that here on this channel, but she's gonna talk about it in regards to the voice a lot. So that came up a lot today. And I just wanted to share her with you guys because she's been just an awesome friend. So let's get started. <laughs> Da Vinci, um, that's like, when we've talked about names for like what I like to have as an artist one yeah. day, um, Da Vinci has been like a last name idea for a while because of different reasons. Um, one of them being my, my great grandfather came over from Italy and his last name was Leonardo. But oh. when, yeah, um, and he never knew that he had a daughter, <laughs> so <Get> it's like, out. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but they, we found, we tracked him down like um, after he had already died and everything. Uh, he had died from diabetes, much like my mom, my grandmother, and my mom has diabetes. Oh, so it's really? Like, I have to be careful. Yeah. Um, but anyways, they. We're all in the medical field. My grandmother was in the medical field. They were so similar, even the way they wrote was exactly the same. Really? Their eyes are the big brown eyes. Is from him and get out. Yeah, like we have his um, documents for like his passport and everything. Anyways, that's like one of the things is that when my grandma had Alzheimer's, she thought that um, his last name was Da Vinci, and she like told everybody at the rest home. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. That is incredible. Yeah. yeah. She's like, so, yes. Yeah. My husband is Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Have you been, like, do you know what part of Italy, though? Yeah. It's, it's like, they came out of Naples. Okay. That's where they departed, but they were from a little medieval town okay. called Pietra Malara. Okay. And I don't know. I just always Pietra wanted to Malara. go see Pietra. it. Pietra. That's but. a beautiful name. Yeah. So my aunt goes to Italy probably six times a year. Yeah. Um, she so her first husband was horrible, abusive, verbally, mm. emotionally, just drug addict, just terrible. Second husband, you know, God can God does redeem all things. Um, and he's just doctor like more just like reserved in every single way mm -hmm. but she's been like gets him out of his comfort zone but Italy has always had her heart so she's like almost fluent in Italian yeah but she when she would start going over there she wouldn't stay at hotels she would stay there's like this thing online where families will host you mm. and so that's how and she's made so many friends all over Italy yeah so Y'all should go. Yeah. With her. Or she can send like you information of a family to stay with. Sure. So you can see that region. Yeah. Well, if the Talbots ever want to come with us when we travel, Heck that yeah, would be we'll really just have fun. to figure out how to <laughs> zonk out a toddler for that long. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll have to just be like, okay, what private jet can we borrow? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we're good? Okay, so we're going to start with some lip rolls. Are we really? <laughs> if oh, you okay. want to. <laughs> no, we don't have to. <laughs> the teachers become the students. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, no, I think it's really fun, though, whenever I'm in a lesson with you. Like, the first time that we did a lesson and we made, like, all those noises and, and fun sounds, I'm like, oh, we're definitely going to be good friends. Yeah. <laughs> if we can be this comfortable. <laughs> right. Literally make the weirdest noises. I, I will always remember my first lesson, calling my mom before and being like, there's no way. On God's green earth, I'm going to make these noises. 
And here I am teaching them and doing them every (laughs) single day. (laughs) And now my son does them too. Right. I've heard him every now and then. (laughs) It's great too because I've got the recording. So I'll be just doing it at my house and stuff. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, my neighbors are definitely not ever going to talk to me. Listen, at least you didn't live at Worthen where the walls were literally so thin. That's the one complaint about that place. They were so thin. And I'm over here like, <laughs> Luckily, on one side, this guy Andy, he was—he's such a good neighbor. He's so funny, so he was cool with it. Yeah, but we never talked to our other neighbors because right. they just—they avoided us whenever avoid eye contact. <laughs> right, so that's the like, girl that meows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's a crazy cat lady, I guess. <laughs> I don't think you can actually move to Nashville though and not expect loud and crazy. Like right. that was the first thing about when we were here. And it was our first night, and we moved from, like, our quiet Virginia mountain to, like, all the sirens and the trains and just, you know, the commotion of a big city. And, and we're like, okay, so this is it, right? <laughs> so It is. It's so um, crazy when you're used to being out there. Yeah. And then, like, you're in the hustle and bustle of it all. Yeah. It's unique, but I I love it. Like, it's fun, mm-hmm. um, the pace of it. And also just, like, how tight-knit Nashville seems too. yeah like you guys have talked about that too with how with music like the music community seems to be really tight-knit yeah too. it's so it's so tight yeah. in like a good way but then also if you're kicked out if you're out you're out like <laughs> yeah. you got to work hard to get back in sure but, but I know that with musicians people a lot too yeah I think. yeah absolutely yeah um that one singer that you showed that you're coaching who was 15 yeah 14 14 <laughs> crazy right (laughs) yeah she was like Katie can we work on this run from burlesque and I was like yeah because I've never seen the movie actually yeah so I had to pull it up on YouTube and it's you know Christina Aguilera doing one of her crazy runs and I was like okay here we go and had to slow it down to like ear it out on the piano so I start slowing it down for her because you can on the YouTube like go to the settings and do a slower Mm -hmm. mode which helps a lot and so she like did the first one and I was just like, Madden, you're nuts. This is amazing. Yeah. So we had fun. Yeah. I was like, we're all, we're just being divas today, just doing licks and runs. That's amazing. It was like, so fun. I don't know. Like it wasn't even expected either to hear how she could just like hit all of those different notes yeah. too. And her mix was good too, which I've learned a lot about from yeah. you too, where you can, I mean, you can speak to it more than I could. Yeah. <laughs> but. Just the blending of chest voice and head voice. It just, you know, sometimes you get, you, it's easy to get locked into that, um, which with her specifically, it's been fun because she is so young. Yeah. So she's able to break those habits, like the bad habits sooner than us starting as adults as singers yeah. or even speakers if we're speaking bad. And, or we have a poor, like, talking voice that's like, just really weak or, or too big. Mm-hmm. So it's been fun with her because she's yeah. just all about just anything theatric and big. And mm-hmm. she just goes for it no matter what. She has no fear of messing up. Yeah. So it's been really fun. And she just locks into that. And when she does, her eyes just... just <laughs> Light up. It's like the best feeling ever. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing her face. Yeah. It's so fun. So you were around that age too, though, right, when you started? I was 17. Yeah. Um, So I was always singing in my bedroom. My mom would always have to come back and be like, turn it down. Yeah. And so I was singing, and then I started lessons with Brett, who was Mm -hmm. my mentor and the coach that I studied under, Brett Manning, uh, when I was 17. Mm -hmm. And so I went in being like, I have a Mariah Carey song I want to sing. And he was like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) and I tried then I was just trying to sing big you know just trying to 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 yell it and then with his technique he was able to show me it doesn't have to be so hard to sing it he I saw a video of him singing he has the highest male voice I think I've ever heard it's crazy he gets into whistle tones yeah Like when I was when I was at the studio on Music Row teaching, he'd be going in the halls and especially on a good vocal day, of course you're just hearing like we sound like a zoo of just like noises <laughs> yeah. everywhere. But he'd be like, Katie and he'd like do some crazy whistle tone and I'm like, Brett, you're over fifty and your voice is just but he's 
he's the master of the voice. He'll always be him and Seth Riggs. Seth is who he learned from. Okay. And was mentored yeah. by. And he taught Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, um, Courtney Love, all, you know, so many voices. Yeah. And I think he's still coaching as well. But, um, but Brett added in more of like an edge coordination that we've worked on before mm-hmm. that helps get a delicate sound with the voice, a delicate coordination. So I, Brett will always be the master of the voice to me. Yeah, yeah. He's incredible. He's, well, it's, it's unique too. Like, you know, we talked a lot about like those weird sounds and stuff, but it all is to, like you're, you know how to make those sounds when you're little. Yeah. And so it's just a matter of imp- applying it yeah. into whatever you're singing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's just, you're not only going to use one part of your voice. Like you have these, you have these vocal cords that have all sorts of coordination up and down. Yeah. And so we don't just talk in like one part right down here. We really talk up here at all. You know, we <laughs> use like all of it. So. Yeah. And obviously as kids, we're like all emotion. Yeah. Just outpouring. Mom, mom, mommy, yeah. mommy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mommy, 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 mommy. What? Dad, dad. <laughs> <laughs> choo choo <laughs> baba <laughs> I'm like I see you have your baba son I'm very proud of you <laughs> he's 18 months now he's 22 months oh my gosh no okay 21 okay yeah he turns two in wow. April wow yeah that's cool I hate it I love it and hate it all together <laughs> he's awesome he's so fun he has so much like energy too like obviously little kids a lot of times yeah. do but um, he has like, so tough. much though, like compared <laughs> to like even some of my nephews, um, that, well, I guess the nephews that I'm thinking of, they always ha- they've always had so many older siblings that probably wear them out within a few hours Yeah, and Elijah doesn't, he just goes, he just goes and goes <laughs> and goes and goes oh, and I goes, love him. which is great. It makes me know that he's just very healthy. Yeah. Just let your kids eat dirt and they'll be real healthy. (laughs) I believe in that a lot. Boost the immune system. Yeah. Um, I saw it where he was seeing the trains with his sitter. Yes. And he was like just starstruck, like complete silence. Enamored. (laughs) Enamored. Yeah. Y'all are y'all will be invited to his birthday. Yeah. And I have the whole choo choo train cake like figured out. I'm having baked on eighth. Have y'all been there yet? No, no. Oh, it's we've such we've been nowhere. <laughs> we've been to oh like my gosh, a few it's places. so good. Yeah. Um, their rice krispie treats and their cinnamon rolls, and then their everything is so good there. But they have these amazing cake designers there, so everything for his birthday will be choo choo. Yeah, everything. <laughs> I'm like, I might have to dress awesome. up as a choo choo. <laughs> like, who knows? <laughs> Be like happy birthday on the choo choo train. <laughs> we could have them all coordinated, so I'll be the caboose. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. We'll have like little things where he can like ride on our back yeah. on the choo choo. <laughs> Dream come true. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, I think for me, I love Dolly too because like her voice almost sounds like a train. So with the train train song that we first practiced yeah. on. I'm like, Zach, her voice sounds like a train. And she's like, he's like, yeah, oh my gosh, you're right. And it's just so cool. It, it but, is because, yeah. you know, if you think about it, like singing is a monologue on pitch. It's acting on pitch. So you mimic yeah. these, these sounds. I mean, from the beginning of time, people have just, they hear something and they repeat it. And they might think, where does that, where is that placement in my voice of like, even like a bird or a siren of, wee, 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 wee. Okay, yeah. there's like a pure head voice sound. Yeah. You know, so you bring in all these sounds just from the world mm-hmm. and you mimic them. And it's the same thing like even with acting, with tones and sure and phrases. You did some acting too, right? Like you took acting classes. I did. And, yeah. Can yeah. you tell me more about I that? I had so much fun yeah. with it for one thing. That's the first thing I started on because I just wanted to be a performer like yeah. so bad. And so I realized when I started acting when I was 16, just because I did plays during high school and everything like that, I loved it so much. Yeah. And 
it just helped me for me as a teenager it was actually almost mm. like going to therapy mm -hmm. because I was able to become like put my emotions of whatever I was feeling into a scene and I had a really great coach at that point um, in Brentwood who would just help me feel safe of doing that um, so then when going out to LA when I was 20 doing all these little um, I did like just little plays with some friends and then did some short films and then you know fast forward a, a ways I did a short film here hmm. um, and I'm it's just so much fun it's just being able to become another character you know it's yeah. just and I'm all about vulnerability right you know? yeah I think it's such a beautiful thing I think there's a strength in that for everybody um, so yeah it, it it was very fun Sure, and, and, and it helps with singing too because it helps you not worry so much and care so much and it's just like okay I'm gonna do this and we will just see how it goes yeah yeah it, it's like which self will I be today yeah like um which James is always asking which one are you gonna be today <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's the 28th day of the month. So. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> this it. is what you're getting. <laughs> uh, um, but that's definitely true of like both with music or even with fashion. Like I think it's interesting how a lot on the channel and everything we talk about finding your personal style when it comes yeah. to clothes. But that's what's so unique about your vocal coaching and the way that you sing yourself. Like you're more about finding your own style. Like yeah. never in any of the classes have you been like, you are a soprano and you will sing this right. way. Right. Like you're very much about finding your own style. Yeah, like definitely. That. Yeah. Which I love how you tie that into fashion because even with artists working on finding their style as a singer and just in the whole picture as an artist, mm -hmm. they have to know what even their fashion style is. Because if it sure. doesn't match their sound and their voice, it's going to be hard for an audience to take that in visually. Mm -hmm. So I think you and you do such a good job with that because there's so many different there's so many options out there to where yeah. sometimes it can feel overwhelming. And I think maybe the same with singing. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. you have so many genres, <laughs> right. so many voices, and we have everything at our fingertips with our phones. So when it comes how you do everything of making it like simple with fashion. Because you make it easy for people. People watch you and it's just like, I was watching you with a girlfriend of mine last night. Oh. And she was, just, and she's like a toughie when it comes to fashion stuff. Yeah. And she's like, wow, this girl knows what she's doing. <laughs> she's like, she makes it so easy. It was the, um, the latest video you posted up with. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. And um, it was just so good of making it so simple of how to fit your body type with, with fashion. Yeah. Make like it your um, own. I think that a lot of times people are told kind of like, you know, with classical fashion, like uh, class fashion, classical <laughs> singing, um, they could tell you exactly. I mean, I'm speaking like as a beginner, yeah. but they, they might tell you exactly how to sing. Um, and there's like blanket statements. And totally. there's a lot of that with fashion too, like um, exact hem links that you should follow and exact ways that petites should dress or whatever. Yeah. And it really isn't so much about that. I mean, obviously first it has to be what you're confident in. And then it moves into different things like um, what is the most flattering for right. your own body style because it's, it's so different depending yeah. on that. Like every girl is different. Like finding jeans can be <laughs> really oh. hard because they're all just different people. Yeah, completely. So, yeah. Completely. And you see a pair, I'll, you know, I always think of looking at someone that like a fashion icon that I admire so much, but they're, you know, if I try something, I'll never forget. I was like 20 Mm -hmm. and it was Hillary Duff. It was something that she was oh, wearing yeah. at like an like a award show or something. And I got a similar style dress to that. Yeah. And when I was 20, I was just in that young, awkward, like didn't know who I was as a person and my fashion. I tried the same style dress on and it looked horrible. <laughs> horrible. But I still wore it because Hillary Duff wore something like that. But yeah. it just, I realized like it just didn't. It was bad. It was bad. I needed Bethany. In my oh, life. I didn't Bethany. know what I was doing at twenty. <laughs> I promise. Oh my gosh. Um, Days. But like <clears throat> you know, bringing that back to music too, like that is so similar to the different things that you've said too, where it's like um, 
you know, because I find a lot of inspiration by people who aren't necessarily who I would sing like. Like I love Lana's Lana Del Rey songs, yeah. and um, but I, you know, to to sing just like her or whatever isn't just right. And right. There's so many carbon copies of you know different singers out there. Yeah, there are, there are, yeah. and I think the best thing that you can do as a singer for anyone who wants to sing is you have all of your influences, and and they have all of theirs too, but they honed into who they are as a person and just what they want to say as a singer. Yeah. And then just they it's you can take in a little bit from each influence but not become one of that because I mean, God gave you your voice specifically for you. Yeah. You know, it's not supposed to sound like this or be like this. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be exactly how it is. So take care of it and learn how to flourish it and grow it. Sure. You know, and be confident in it. Yeah, um, you know, and like it's so cool because I was, you know, we were sitting right here at this table a couple months ago, and I was like, I can't sing high at all. <laughs> you know, there's no I way like, I can sing. High. <laughs> yeah. I just had no idea. <laughs> As we like do the warm up, and you're getting literally almost to a double high C in lip rolls, and then you got whistle tone like what in your second or third lesson? Apparently, Apparently. you're like that's whistle tone. I'm yeah. like, I, it's what? Yeah. <laughs> or showing me this song, they're like, she goes really high. I, yeah. I was like, Bethany, you just hit that. <laughs> You just did like a step or two above that. Yeah. Well, to preserve it too, I think is important. Like how you can show somebody how to preserve their voice is is great because like I've wondered that like even because I've, you know, aside from just making weird warm-up voices, sometimes just to make life a little lighter, I'll just be like, la, 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 yeah, <laughs> whatever yeah. in my house. Yeah. And I'm like, I hope that I'm not ruining this. Yeah. Well, as long as you don't feel strain or hurt, you know, it's yeah. the same thing if you're working out and you're like, I want to, I want to go a little bit harder today, like do a little bit of a tougher workout. And if you feel strain in your body where there's hurt, mm-hmm. you know, then you stop. It's the same thing with the voice. You know, if you're feeling that strain or you're feeling tightness where you can't get anything out, you know, yeah. otherwise if you just, sometimes the best thing for us to do is just sing without caring. Mm. Yeah. You know, that's a that's a really good thing too. Mm-hmm. But again, if you do feel like oh, I can't get anything out, you're like the hell, you know, <laughs> if you're doing that thing, yeah. you know, then stop. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, just sing. Right. You know. Yeah, it's just so much fun, you know? Like it's one of those things where to practice with it is like you look down and it's like three hours have passed because it's just been fun. I know. It really yeah. is fun. And I love that you have that. Like it's, I think that's why I love just, I'll always love working one-on-one with people because everyone's experience is completely different. It's one thing to warm up a group online who are, they're around the world or whatever. But when you have that one-on-one, you get to see the personal reaction of like what's going on in their mind, in yeah. their spirit, in their voice. It's just a, it never gets old, you know, whether you're 14, whether you're 42 or whether you're 30. Yeah. It's just so much fun because yeah. you see the pure joy. Like music is, it brings about joy. It brings healing. Sure. And it is fun. Yeah. It's so fun. So who have been like your favorite singers, would you say? That I've worked with? Sure. Or just singers in general? Both. Okay, both. <laughs> um, singers in general. I'm going to have to say Roberta Flack is a favorite of mine. Um she just has that voice that's just so easy, but she she's the one who does the first time ever I saw your face, and I saw her at the um, Skirmahorn here in Nashville with the symphony, mm-hmm. and that's how you say it, right? I That's how I heard a composer say it. <laughs> okay. I don't I'm know why go I did it. this for composing, very little, <laughs> but he said it He said it that way, yeah. so I, I'm, I'm just following I his I think footsteps. the key is to say it fast and no yeah. one knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the symphony here in Nashville. (laughs) She was 76 years old. And she sang, she was just incredible. So she's a voice that I've always loved. Celine Dion, hands down, having just seen her too, like completely life changed. And um, old school Mariah for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, those first three records are some of my favorites. Whitney. And then I love people like Kurt Cobain and Bob Dylan. 
that you wouldn't think of are great vocalists, but they're just so real that, and they're just iconic voices. Mm-hmm. So I would say those. And then one of actually my favorite <clears throat> students is, um, I'm going to have, well, obviously <laughs> kidding, you, kidding. but there's this, there's this, um, man in France who actually has Parkinson's disease and he mm-hmm. has taken lessons, um, here and there throughout the year. He'll probably take like, you know, maybe five or six lessons. He's on my warm up group as well. He might be in his fifties or sixties. Um, but his, he does vo- vocal lessons to help strengthen, to keep strengthening his talking voice. So it's still shaky, of course, because it's hard when your muscles are just going lax like that yeah. um, and you can't control them. Yeah. But his amazing grace is one of my favorite. I mean, it makes me tear up every time I hear it because like, you hear his just like his heart in it. Sure. And um, so that's always something that just sticks with me because it reminds me it's not just about a career. It's like about the voice, mm-hmm. you know. But otherwise, I have a handful of the ones that I love working with when it comes to just you know, where their career is going, how much they're loving it, and what their voice can do. Yeah. So um, you mentioned Celine Dion. Yes. So you went to her concert. Definitely. (laughs) I literally, I told James, I was like, this is the best night of my life. I was like, I love you. I loved getting married to you. I loved having our son. I loved those days (laughs) and those nights. But I'm like, Celine Dion has like taken the cake for a little bit. Yeah. It was so, so fun. And she, for one thing, she... She's very strict on her, like her vocal regimen, her, like just her routine in life. Like she works around her voice. Mm -hmm. So I've heard. She has not called me specifically and told me these things, but I have heard. Um, And she, I mean, she was effortless. Like her Mm. confidence and like who she was as a woman. And then her voice was just like, she was hitting these notes that I was with my best friend, Kirsten. Yeah. um, Who we just grew up listening to her. Like, you know, we'd call each other on the phone when she was playing on 107.5 The River and we'd both like (laughs) sing along to her. That's just what we would do. Yeah. And, um, oh, Bethany, she was so good. She was so good. Yeah. I was like, I, I need to see this every day of my life but it also I went home and I was like okay for the artists that re- that I work with that really want to take their careers to that level mm-hmm. I was like it's it, seeing that was a game changer because she for one thing you know she started before you know internet was what it is and where our where the music industry is now and that you know so it does make it tough but she's withstood the test of time in that sense and just stayed so on top of her game and yeah um you know you have these artists that are kind of coming and going so I left being like okay telling some of my singers that are really in it for like full-time career of like you got to step it up like the Mm -hmm. routine has to be there so that you can withstand you know the test of time yeah. You know, because it's crazy. Also, you were on the Jumbotron. I was. <laughs> which was also a big highlight <laughs> in my life. <laughs> there was this guy that was dancing on the screen, and he was a fabulous dancer. He was amazing. He did a yeah. really good job. Yeah. And But I looked over to Kirsten, and I was like, someone has to battle him. Like, someone just has to battle him. And Bethany, if I did nothing else in life, I definitely would want to be someone's backup dancer. Oh, yeah. Like... That's my, that would be the career that I just never did that I would just, like, it's just a fantasy of mine. Yeah. And so Kirsten was like, well, get up and do it. And I was like, okay. So I just got up and then they panned (laughs) over to me. And of course, like, dream came true where I was up there and then he was up there and then they had a side by side for a little bit, which was really fun. Um, and then Kirsten, she's a little bit reserved sometimes at first, Yeah. but once I got her up and dancing, I couldn't get her to stop. It was so fun. So <laughs> literally awesome. I got to dance on the jumbotron with my best friend since five and 
just literally go crazy and be up there. It was so funny. I was having students text me and be like, oh, Miss Talbot. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then, of course, the next day I was like, I can't move. All right. I'm not 21 anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you guys would call each other up and sing her songs and then you're both on the Jumbotron several yeah. times dancing at Celine yeah. Dion's concert. Like, they were like, I, you know, the cameramen were like, this is a Celine Dion concert, but Katie's here. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going <laughs> to Well, I would like to think that, but I'm sure they're like, this crazy blonde is here. Let's get her. <laughs> it was so fun. It was just, it was... Every we had sushi that night. It was perfect. Everything was like yeah. perfect about that night. It was so much fun. And then the word courage was on the screen too, which mm-hmm. like two nights before you're like, courage is my word of the year. Yeah, which I didn't even think about. I didn't put two and two together. And um actually until you pointed it out. So <laughs> thank you for that wise input sure. of <laughs> realizing, time. Katie, did you know that <laughs> your favorite night had to do with the word that you're doing you're going through <laughs> yes. this year? Do you have um, a word this year? Do you do words at all? This is the mm-hmm. first, like I did one last year, but I forgot my last year. <laughs> so I was like, this year I'm going to see if I can follow through with it. <laughs> I haven't really thought of like one word. For me, I love to make all my New Year's resolutions, but not just then. Like I look at it daily. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm yeah. like, okay, so if that's the big goal, you know, and I'll make a big goal for like one that I don't know how to do yeah. for 2025 totally. and then break it down into little tiny chunks that I think I can control on a daily basis or yeah. monthly or whatever or yearly. And then I'll just check those off every year, yeah. make a little paragraph at the end of the year of what we did. And it's like, wow, you're really organized about this, <laughs> well, Bethany. Yeah. I need to get my, I need to do that. That's amazing. Well, it's, it's encouraging because <clears throat> so many dreams end up being realities yeah or sooner than I ever thought because 2025 might be very generous compared to what could actually be happening if you're intentional about it absolutely no I agree 100% yeah we're doing vision boards tonight okay have you done a vision board before haven't no so we're doing it based on like our calling and what we love to do yeah and what we feel very fulfilled in and like you know who we want to do life with and everything versus um, just like goals and amounts of things, sure. you know, which yeah. so I'm excited about it. Yeah. I'll have to have y'all over it. Yeah. Y'all so is it you and James, you're mm-hmm. doing that together? That's so cool. Yeah. Like to do fun. that as a couple is really good. Too. Yeah. This is our yeah. first year doing it. I'll let yeah. you know how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Zach. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So um, fun. you guys are so cute though. Like you're a great couple and I just feel like Jaja has the brightest future to have a vocal coach for a mom and then like a musician well-rounded musician too like as a dad and like what are he's his gonna possibilities? either be all into it yeah and thrive more than I can even imagine or he is going to loathe it <laughs> you know I, I you know I just but with how much he loves music as mm-hmm. just a little one even whether it's like um, a few people have been like, Katie, he's singing, just kind of going around like, mm, you know, but he would do it, keep it on a melody or and he keeps beat really well. And then he hears, you know, a movie with whatever song comes on the Polar Express, the hot, 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 hot chocolate. Oh yeah. And when you start that, <laughs> he's jumping like this high up into the air yeah. and, um, loves it and he always goes to James's guitar too and oh, wow. so it's going to be fun to see what that turns into yeah you know but so what are his go-tos like Polar Express Polar Express yeah it, well anything with Choo Choo right anything with Choo Choo yeah which He's, obviously Polar he, Express um, of course outside he would rather just be outside which I love but yeah. during the winter that can be tricky you know mm-hmm. Um, because in the summertime, rain or shine, you can be outside. It doesn't matter if you're getting rained on. Yeah. Um, he likes Moana now, too, mm. which um, I found a new love for because yeah. I watched it once and I always thought it was great, but I didn't watch it with a child, you know? Oh, yeah. I just watched it when I was pregnant and just needed to sit in bed and watch things. <laughs> and um, amazing music in that one. And the colors mm. are so beautiful. Yeah. So he loves that. And then he loves... There's this one educational video that has like the ABCs, colors, yeah. nursery rhymes, and then like we do these short Ten Commandments. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That he loves too. Yeah. But he gets up and dances when the music goes on. Oh, 
That's awesome. I say dances. He does like this like modern like <laughs> like stomp thing. He'll like look at you and like do a stomp. And I'm like, are you about to break dance? Like what's about to happen here? I love his new hello. It's just. Yeah. <laughs> he goes into, I don't know. I was like, well, he can't do this as a teenager because that's not going to be good. Yeah. But he just goes into this. He wants to dance. He puts on a show. Yeah. Which is hilarious. When he calls his papa or his pop pop, which is the grandpa's on both sides, he does the same thing. And he yeah. just gut laughs. Just <laughs> gut laughs. <I'm> like, breathe, <laughs> <laughs> like, son, breathe. <laughs> but you know, I prayed for joy. So I take, well, I don't take responsibility for that. Um, <laughs> Because that's all God, but I uh, definitely will say that I prayed for joy, and God answered that prayer yeah. abundantly. <laughs> yeah, he was like, "I'm giving you he's, all the joy." He's just the happiest kid, you know. He is. Like he's so happy. It's so every, fun, you know. Like of course he's little, so if he ever has like a little br- like meltdown, like we all do, we just hide it. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, like, exactly. When you're that age, you know, obviously there's sometimes, but like he's an angel. Like there's. I don't know. He can do no wrong in my eyes. He's awesome. Well, thank you. He does have his little meltdowns, of course. And I'll be like, I feel the same way. Yeah. I'm with you. You're not alone. Yeah. Um, But usually it's, you know, he's getting, especially since James tours a lot, he's getting to the point where he recognizes and like knows he's gone Mm -hmm. and misses him. Yeah. So he's a little bit sensitive when I'll walk out the door, even if I'm just going outside for something real quick, or James goes outside because he's thinking, you mm-hmm. know, you're leaving for a little bit. Because I think he's starting to understand um, or grasp the time a little oh, bit sure. more. Because they go yeah. through these mental leaps. Yeah, like it seems like, you know, zero to two is like the time where you're growing the most as a person yeah, ever so in your much. life. Yeah, so much. Emotionally, like there's so many milestones that they go through which is really cool to see as an adult because it just reminds you of it helps you just put a lot of things into perspective Mm -hmm. and remember things you know and these little ones sometimes they'll get overwhelmed and they just need to rest like sit and and rest a little bit or be held and I think as adults we need that too whether it's like just sitting down and resting in the hustle and bustle of everything Mm -hmm. or literally just walking over to our spouse and be like, I just need to be held for a second. There's nothing (laughs) wrong with saying that, you know, and, but I think we just think I can do it. I'm like, you know, cause we can do it, but rest and everything is okay too. Cause so it's really cool. The one to two, one to three is, it's amazing. Yeah. There's days where I would say there's days where it's hard, but it's really not. It might be like two minutes here and there where it's like you're dealing with a tough attitude just because they're so stubborn because they're realizing their independence, but it's not hard. I think yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's so worth it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Nothing a cup of coffee can't right. help. <laughs> a cup of ambition. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. Awesome. You worked at Starbucks too, didn't you? I did for we three both years. Worked. I think... Even what were the years that you worked there? 2006 to 2000, early 2009. Okay. Or, yeah, mid-2009. Cool. When yeah. You, you were there. 2000, oh, this is, I usually don't give my age, but <laughs> this is going to really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started as a baby <laughs> yeah. um, in 2005, <clears throat> and then I ended up um, leaving in 2007. Okay. So, yeah, we yeah, had a little overlap. a little bit. Yeah. But you left. I was fired. Were you? I was. I was, I was kindly dismissed, but I had mono, so. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, I can't like, help it. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. It was, it was weird, yeah. but it, it worked out, you know. It always does, actually. Yeah, it does. Like, with stuff like that. It does. It yeah. really does. Yeah. It, like, helps you. Sometimes, I think, I know in that sense for me I needed to go elsewhere because it led me to so many of my close friends out that are still out in LA and some of them even live here Mm -hmm. and it really just was a a great shift in life for me so it was cool how that worked out yeah so like what was it like living in LA for you and um what did you do there like what was that whole experience well I mean, it was amazing because just being like young 20s, 
I always lived at home until I was 20 because I was working at Starbucks and working a few other jobs, like riding horses for people in Franklin and knowing that I wanted to make it out to LA so I could do singing and acting because that's because Nashville hadn't really popped in this. It did music country or country music wise Mm -hmm. um, and Christian music, but I wanted that pop R&B stuff, which is all out in LA. Yeah. So I was working Starbucks to pay the bills. Yeah. And then a lot of crazy just moments of meeting people that had a huge impact in my life. Um, And, you know, got to sing for some really amazing people. And this guy, Paris, saw me walking on the street and was like, hey. Of course, I'm like this little girl from the South being like, no. (laughs) (laughs) Like, you do, don't holler at me. <laughs> yeah, right. And um, he was like, no, you live in my building. And I was like, really? Right. And he was like, yeah. He's like, I see you walking in with uh, with Brandy. And I was like, oh, okay. Then that was the friend I was living with. And um, so we got to talking and he was with, uh, his business partner was Mike, who is the baritone in Boys to Men. And... Um, I and like two weeks later I was singing for Mike in the studio in North Hollywood and I was singing an India Ari song and then a song of mine that I wrote back 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 in the day which is probably still on my space somewhere like who even knows and um so just things like that happened like yeah just randomly and it was always people when I was just walking um people would stop and and talk and I would just they were in the industry of some sort in some way and but were safe you know Mm -hmm. I was never in harm's way till later till I was bartending and just got into that scene of like oh this isn't the best um yeah but it was it was an awesome time because I was able to you know I I actually praised my parents because they did a really good job of I think raising all their kids and my siblings because we we dispersed all over the world and we still I think it's really important when you go to a big city um, you know coming from literally a farm to going to a city um, like LA it's just really important to know who you are and to Mm -hmm. be grounded in that because if I wasn't it would have been a whole different story you know, but I loved all the opportunities. I was a yes person out there of just saying yes to opportunities. And if, if I didn't feel safe in it, it would end quickly. Yeah. Um, but I met a lot of great people out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I I wouldn't live there again, mm-hmm. um, especially raising a family. I like how I was raised um, mm-hmm. in a smaller town, though Nashville is not small anymore. Yeah. No, it isn't. But, it's um, crazy. It is crazy. But even Franklin's not small with how much it's grown. Sure. But I don't regret a thing. Yeah. It was so fun. Yeah. It was just so fun. And I really met some, you know, I call them lifers, the friends that I met out there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It was so fun. Yeah. So you mean Brandy, like the Cyrus? Brandy, yes. The yeah. version of yep. Brandy's that is Cyrus. Yes. <laughs> yes. She's the oldest. That's so cool. Um, I, her and I grew up riding horses together. Yeah. So we've known each other since we were 10. And so when Miley was still doing Hannah Montana, um, it was Brandy, um, our friend from high school, Michelle, and then Kirsten, actually, best friend since five. Uh, We've done a lot together. We've covered a lot of ground together. Yeah. But we all moved out there. Yeah. And um, Kirsten was out there for a year and a half. Michelle was out there for three months. And then, you know, of course, I stayed for almost four, four and a half years. And then, of course, Brandy's always been back and forth. She does DJ stuff now. Mm. So she's always traveling like crazy. But it was fun. It was, you know, they're an amazing family. They're so um, full of so much talent, so much love, Mm. you know. And it was was fun to and a blessing to be in with um, someone who was high up in the industry like crazy, but that was just a good family. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. Like, it's a really unique experience, and I think that a lot of times, um, like, taking those leaps when you can. When I did my video about, like, what would I tell my 20-year-old self, it was a lot about, you know, 
if you can, like whenever that time is in your life where you feel that independence that you might not have one day yeah. to go and try things and take yeah. some risks or just take time to learn, like you have those opportunities. Yeah. Um, and that's really rare and important and something that you'll treasure, even if it's not a forever thing. Totally. And I don't think to expect somewhere to be forever is the best way to enjoy it the most. I think so too. Yeah, yeah that's very well put because we, I feel like we put a pressure on ourselves mm-hmm. to have it figured out yeah. at such a young age. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I think it's really important for us to also not be afraid of failing. I don't think there's a thing such as failure. Yeah. You know, you try. You're so right about that. Like, yeah. Like you try, you, you, you try and you do it. You try and you still succeed because you're trying. Yeah. You know. Um, When I was little, like, I would use art as my outlet, kind of mm-hmm. like you did um, with, you know, acting and, ever- and music. Yeah. And just to be able to, my art teacher taught me, like, the most valuable lesson in the third grade, which is, um, I'm like, oh, I'm just really trying. I really can't make this work. And she's like, throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay try yeah. again and obviously she probably didn't think of it that much because I was in the third grade you know like throwing out a third grade yeah. piece of art isn't like no yeah. my heart. <laughs> this <laughs> is my Van Gogh <laughs> <laughs> um but the fact that she did that allowed me later in life when I'm talking with clients and they're like we've poured x amount of you know, thousands of dollars or millions or whatever it is into this project. Like we have to make it work. And it's like, well, you could take a fragment of it and turn it into something else. Yeah. They did that with the, was it Slack? The app Slack. They did that. Okay. um, Where it was going to be this huge like game or something. Okay. And then they turned it into what Slack is today just by taking the little more so salvageable um, product. Yeah. Yeah. How amazing is that, though, that you have that instilled in you at, like, third grade? Yeah. That's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's those little moments that we hold on to. Yeah. That it's like, I, my mom, even in high school, when I was a junior, I was just, because I've always been more artsy, and mm-hmm. um, reading and comprehension was never fully my thing, sure. even though I would want it to be. Yeah. You know, she always told me, she goes, Katie, grades don't define you. Just mm-hmm. make sure you're doing what you're called to do. You know, Winston Churchill failed. She was like, Winston Churchill failed eighth grade three times. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, and he's Winston Churchill. Yeah. Like an idol of mine who yeah. I just, you know, look up to. Yeah. And such a bulldog of a man. Yeah. And, um... Talk about which self to be I today. Know, he had a whole hat Seri- collection of Yeah, that. It, exactly. Yeah. So it was really cool to, um, you know, those moments are impactful. Mm-hmm. And I think it's good to to remember those. Yeah. That was so good of your teacher to say that. Yeah. I, I want to get the foam in this, but I also don't want foam all <laughs> right. over me. <laughs> I love how you keep your plants alive. <laughs> Actually, Barely. for real. Because Barely. I cannot do that, Bethany. I cannot do it. Yeah. I'll buy flowers and I'll keep flowers good for a week. But when it comes to, I mean, even on James and I's first date, he brought me fake flowers because I just do not have a green thumb. Yeah. Growing up on a farm, I can keep animals alive. Well, that's good. But plants, and y'all <laughs> have so, your plants are just so pretty. Thank you. This one's fake, but the rest of them, I mean, that one, uh, the Monstera, yeah. is huge. It's gorgeous. It's also the one that suffers the most because... I have to cart it into the kitchen and water it there Uh, and then bring it back out like a day or two later and it's just not going to get watered all the time. It's the um, baby. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah. Um, Mm, Yaldi's so good. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. Wait a moment. Yeah. (laughs) Of water too. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank you. Obviously, I'm like going straight to the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Monday today. Did you? I, I thought it was Monday today, and yesterday I thought it was Tuesday. I'm extremely off this week. <laughs> right. I don't know what's happening. Well, trash pickup is tomorrow. Yeah. And I don't know why the other day they picked it up a day before. Did they Just really? randomly. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I didn't know that. Down the road, and I'm like, dang. But, I didn't know that. I yeah. wonder if it was like a specific... Or was it the trash guys or was it a specific yeah. thing? 
I love being neighbors with you. It's really fun. Because we can, we can, like, honor and complain about the trash guys together. That's right. Together. Yes. <laughs> they You're do not okay. supposed to come till tomorrow. I know. We're already prepared to be 80. I think. Yeah, we really are. <laughs> Fully, com- like, we're going to have, we're going to go back out to the country. Yes. And we will sit on our porches <laughs> having our coffee. And we can do the vocal exercises as loud as we want. <laughs> I'll need it to yeah. not be wobbly yeah. in my voice. Yeah. They're Get off a- our property. <laughs> <laughs> there are the two sweetest old men that just every day they sit out by the pasta place. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and they just they just sit there and it's through all seasons. You know, kind of like the guys on... Um, that old short film that Pixar made where they're doing chess, like two old men playing chess. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you see them throughout the different oh, seasons or whatever. Oh, I have to pay attention whatever. as I'm yeah. driving by. Yeah, they're I really love, cute. I love their pasta over there, too. I yeah. wonder if that's just been their spot. Like, I've always thought about doing – I thought it'd be so fun. I've always thought this for – since I moved back from L.A. But there's so many faces of Nashville when it comes mm-hmm. to the people that have – just been here since they I mean born and raised here you know and have seen so much of the city change yeah and then you know the homeless and then Mm -hmm. those who have done the building and architecture here from way back in the day to now or even the mom and pop shops that have been around I think it'd be so fun to like get pictures of them and put it into like a coffee book Mm. like coffee table book and just to have like the faces or the people of Nashville and it's the people that like built this city you know I feel like I always wanted to do that their faces would have been so different than now yeah like because the city seems very different or obviously it's going to evolve and change as the city grows Mm -hmm. fast um but yeah that would be awesome yeah just and they hear I feel their like stories. you want to hear about the, their stories, you know, yeah. even if it's a paragraph of what they love to do and it was a specific spot that's now this, you know? Yeah, right. I think it'd be so interesting. Yeah, like that's one of the fun things about having one of the older houses too. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I mean, you have an older house too. Like mm-hmm. we both have that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's interesting taking care of it and like making sure because, you know, there was – um, one of the guys that mowed last summer, uh-huh. a rock went through the, one of the back windows. Oh. And so I was like, hey, so <laughs> this like, happened. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like just, you know, that that was probably not a good story because my point is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, rocks <laughs> going through windows, it's always a good story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my point is that like it it's gone like once that's gone like yeah it's gone forever yeah so a book like that would also be true of like you know you have their chance to tell their stories now yeah yeah I hate that about your window though that's yeah. so tedious yeah but, I mean, you know it happens yeah it was one of the wavy glass ones too so it was kind of like oh, oh dang yeah um but you know at the same time we rent so it's more like no how dare you do this to their house yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah totally you get like protected yeah. it's like you're protecting your safe place and your home but also theirs as well yeah. you know and the history of it yeah yeah but yeah there's so many i think um this part of town too has done such a great job with keeping some of the old homes alive yeah. and restoring them true cuz there's even we need to do a whole day. I say a whole day. It's going to be a lot longer than a whole day. We need to do a whole weekend of just some of the historic places in Nashville, like the churches and even, um, gosh, some of the um, churches downtown for sure. Then some of the specific homes and like the manors that are around here. And then in mm-hmm. downtown Franklin, of course, with all the Civil War history, which is just yeah. – um, Carton Plantation, Carter House, mm-hmm. um, um, you know, it's it's crazy when you study and you go around down there and you're like, wow, that general was like shot there. Mm-hmm. And it's like there's, you know, dominoes right there. Yeah. <laughs> but right. now there's a domino. <laughs> yeah, there's there a dominoes. <laughs> but uh, we should do a, we should do like a national history tour too. That'd yeah. be so fun. Yeah, it would definitely to go would. do the double date weekend. Yes, that would be, that would be so awesome. Fun. And we have to eat all those places too. Right. Yeah. 
Um, I come from a town that's like really historic. Mm -hmm. and there's one area that still is very preserved. So like I'm from Winston Salem, North Carolina, and there's yeah. one there's Old Salem, and they were so proud of themselves because Je uh, not Jefferson, it was George Washington toured there once on <clears throat> like one of his campaigns or whatever. Yeah, and <laughs> George Washington was like so shy. Like he de he never spoke one thing because his teeth, his um, dentures would literally pop out of his mouth if get he talked out. yeah so get he, out like he was the most humble you know be he's a human so he's not perfect I'm right not saying that I'm not glorifying him but like he was a very humble person and like he just was so painfully shy wow and so when my town like which in a Mayberry sense you know with Andy Griffith would have been like so proud mm -hmm. to have the president yeah, <laughs> come by and my stuff. gosh yeah he I I was always like all my whole life I heard that I read his biography and he never left the tavern because he didn't want the parades and the flutes and the he just was like, no, 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 no. Really? <laughs> so, yeah. so, like, my town really embarrassed him, I guess. <laughs> so. Oh, they were like, he came to us. <laughs> yeah, like, Glorifying in yeah. that visit, yeah. basking in it. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I could understand it, because if he never went out, then <laughs> they're like, we're going to capitalize on yes. this. <laughs> wow, I don't think I realized that about his shyness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. I love the history up in that part of the um, yeah. country, too. Yeah, like North Carolina, Virginia, like all of yeah. that is some of the oldest. Yeah. Tennessee is just as old in a sense. I mean, that was kind of like part of North Carolina, wasn't right. it, at the time? Right. But I don't want to be quizzed on this something. No, <laughs> yeah. me neither, because I was about to chime in about Alvin York, but here we are talking about like 1700s versus early 20th century. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, Alvin York. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm like, is it Friday? <laughs> Obviously, I can't get my days right. So I think mentally, I'm just ready for the weekend. Yes. Even though as a mom, we don't get a weekend, but it still feels good that it's the weekend. The routine is so necessary. It doesn't matter, you know, yeah. what, what you, you are doing or like, you know, now I'm moving into full time of this. And it's yeah. just like, I don't know what day it is either, honestly. Yeah. No, it's, it's not, okay. Like it's you okay. don't, you don't have the to. Sun is, <laughs> it is about two o'clock. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. And that's all that matters. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's all that matters. Okay, I should probably have water because I've been drinking coffee right. the entire time. <laughs> mm. Delicious. <laughs> so good. Is this tap? <laughs> yes, yes. From the city. <laughs> Nashville, your water is so good. <laughs> oh All right, gosh. well, before our voices go, yeah. um, is there anything that I could bring up, like where can people find you online? Yeah. All those things. Um, well, I'm merging everything into the Vocal Lab Collective when it comes to YouTube, mm -hmm. um, which is with my business partner. Um, mm -hmm. who Jason. Wore, yeah, yeah, with Jason, yeah. one of my best friends as well. So that's on the Vocal Lab Collective when it comes to uh, YouTube and everything. We'll be doing vocal tips and like reaction videos, yeah. um, which I'm excited about to get into because yeah. I've done vocal tips before, but, um, you know, doing some reaction videos will be fun. Yeah, they're fun. And then, you know, Instagram, just the KD, KT. I have it tatted on me, actually, because I thought that'd be really, like really swag. It is. When I was 23. Yeah. And little did I know I'd be Katie Talbot. Yeah. So it'd be KT. It was a foreshadow. Yeah, it was. So if you haven't met your husband yet, you know, just go get a tattoo. No, I'm <laughs> That's right. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, the KT Talbot. Cool. Yeah. This was so much fun. Yes. Thank I you so much for joining I would not hate doing me. this every single day. You are welcome. <laughs> this is fun. Just and to we get can coffee just, and conversation. Yes. We can just keep <clears throat> doing it until we're 80. And then, yeah, I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll do it in the middle of this field. Yeah, right. Where we won't even know where it is. Aesthetically, I think that could really work. Yeah, it yeah. could. It yeah. could. We'll be in the midst of Montana. Nice. I say we won't even know where it is, and I just name where we go. <laughs> Somewhere, though. Somewhere. Montana's really big. It is huge. Yeah. So huge. We won't know, but... We won't know. Yeah. But we'll have some... Bison. You know, bison behind <laughs> us. Maybe a grizzly. I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you for having Katie. me. This was so much fun. Yes. 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed our little girl chat. And then don't forget also, you can find in the description box links to everything, including how you can subscribe to my podcast when you're on the road. And then also I, I'll be, just leave all the links for Katie as well. Um, anything that she mentioned, you can find links there. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. You got